Can an app like Notion actually change your life? Yes. And it's not just in the, ooh, all my books are now sorted alphabetically and I have a really, really pretty notebook kind of way. No, more on the, let's throw eight years of education and training and career out of the window. Here's what I mean. Hey, I'm Matthias and I help people waste less time so they can focus on what's actually important. But just one year ago, my life looked very different. I had just started working as a lawyer. Finally, I studied law, prepared for my bar exams, and uh, did countless internships and traineeships for more than eight years. And then, after just three months as a lawyer, I quit, gave back my lawyer license to do this. Creating content around Notion and automations and helping small teams and startups waste less time. And last week marked not one, but three very special moments. First, my YouTube channel got monetized and I earned already $1.72. Second, my Notion newsletter crossed 10,000 subscribers. And for the first time ever, I earned as much doing this as I would have as a lawyer. It still baffles me that it's possible and that I actually get paid to do something that I love doing and that I would also do kind of for free. A job always used to feel like something that I get paid to do because I wouldn't otherwise do it. But that has changed drastically over the past year. So today I wanted to share with you how this happened, what I learned along the way, and most importantly, how you can do the same if you're interested. Oh, and at the end, I have also, of course, a giveaway for this special occasion of crossing 10,000 subscribers. So stick around till the end to learn how to enter that. So how did I actually get here? Well, it actually started on YouTube. More precisely, I found Ali Abdal's YouTube channel while I was prepping for the bar exam and looking for more videos on how to study effectively. And then, after binging a few hours of content, I found Notion. I immediately downloaded a bunch of templates, tried like different setups, like created a very busy workspace. It was like all very messy, it didn't lead to anything, but I was immediately hooked. And even though I had to throw pretty much everything out what I did there in the beginning, I slowly started to learn through other amazing content creators like Marie Poulin, uh, August Bradley, Thomas Frank, or Kehi, how to use Notion and how to really make an impact with that. And around about the same time, I had actually, for other reasons, decided to start a blog. I was reading a lot of productivity and self-help advice, and I thought, well, it's hard to actually put these things into practice, and maybe, maybe if I write about them, it's like an additional reason to actually do these things instead of just, yeah, reading about them. That kind of worked, but, I mean, it got me to start a blog. And after a few articles, I wrote for the first time about Notion, more precisely about uh, how to build a simple settle custom. And something happened, like this one, like it also didn't get a lot of traction, but a lot more people were interested in that compared to the other things I was doing. And that was the first aha moment that like, I really liked Notion, I was good at it, and other people seemed to care about what I was doing. And then slowly over time, that pattern kept repeating. Whenever I would write about Notion, a lot more people were interested in it. And over time, uh, that built into like the snowball and all of a sudden <laughs> I had a blog with a lot of Notion articles and a lot of subscribers that really cared about all these cool tricks and workarounds. And with that, things started happening. All of a sudden, I got really cool opportunities and yeah, just options uh, that otherwise would never have been available simply because I went from just passively consuming stuff on the internet to actually creating something and putting something out there. The best analogy for this that I've heard so far is actually also from Ali and his brother Taimu Abdal on their old podcast where they talk about that starting a blog or like pretty much doing anything more actively on the internet is like moving from a small village to a big city. All of a the sudden there are a lot more potential people for you to meet, a lot more opportunities to find you and you yeah, just create a lot more surface for serendipity and chance simply by yeah, having now um, a lot more people to interact with. And nowhere is that more obvious than with my current business. The only reason that I can work as a Notion consultant and actually earn any money of that is because I've put out a lot of free content and I've earned people's trust. 
right? That's pretty much the blueprint for any online business. There's no certification for these new sort of skills. No one can really judge, right? Like, is that person good at what they're doing, right? The only way to convince someone that you are worth their money and their time and that you are a good fit to solve their problem is to show them how you solve problems. I like to put a lot of these things out there for free to go for them to go through and then build an opinion and say, well, yes, this is actually someone that I want to hire and that I want to work with. So I mainly learned three things that I think are really important in this context. First, compounding growth is crazy, but also slow. You always overestimate what you can achieve in a day, right? We have our long to-do list with 15, 20, 25 items, and we usually get around to three if it's a good day. But we also underestimate just how far we can go if we stick with something continuously. So it took me two and a half years to get here, right? Uh, I was doing this one and a half years before I started to do it full time. And without that very long on-ramp, none of this would have been possible. But if you stick with it for this long, then the compounding part of it, right? The end part of the curve goes to the sky and it's so much faster and there's so much more growth than you would ever expect in the beginning. Second, I think that pretty much anyone, no matter what your profession is and no matter whether you actually want to become a content creator or consultant uh, at some point, anyone could profit from building their own brand online. Simply starting to put your thoughts out there and connecting with more people that are interested in the same things that you are talking about is just such a crazy <laughs> accelerator and cheat sheet for your uh, success that I think uh, even if you say like, I want to uh, continue on a more traditional career, this would be worth it. I've seen a lot of people over the past two and a half years, right, who started and did this for a while and then took on other opportunities and just used this as sort of a yeah, jumping uh, point to, to get to the next level. So it's not like the only reason to start a blog is because you want to do this full time at some point. You can also just supplement your existing uh, career. And even if nothing ever comes of it, I think one of the best arguments for it is that it just pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Uh, when I started my blog, I had before that pretty much posted never anything online. I didn't even have an Instagram account. So going from I don't do these sort of things to all of a sudden, well, I'm now someone who writes on the internet. I do like somewhat of a creative uh, work. This is still very weird for me to say. Is such a change and like such an opportunity for personal growth. So I think it's always great to like seek out these opportunities to push the boundaries of the stories that you tell yourself. Third and last, it's really important that if you do this, you find your MVC, your minimum viable content. Because the only way that this ever amounts to anything is if you are able to keep it up over a long time. So no matter like what you choose, right? No matter whether you write a blog, newsletter, do TikTok videos, uh, it has to be something that you know you can keep up in this way for at least six months, better a year, because that's how long it will take uh, to see some actual traction. So instead of, you know, like doing these sprints and saying, okay, I'm gonna do like 10 videos now in uh, one week and after that uh, I have to go back to my job so I can't do it for another three months. Instead of doing like these like crazy uh, concentrated workloads, try to find like a cadence where you say, okay, no matter what happens, I will always be able to do that, right? Of course, it would have been better if I wrote a newsletter every week or put out a video every week, but I can't do that. I can do every two weeks, that works, and that's the cadence I stick with. But I think it's much better to do it that way than yeah, to like have these small bursts where you do a lot and then big breaks in between. So how can you do the same? Well, the first and I think most important thing is to just start. If you uh, are very early on and you start doing something new, you will probably be bad at it. You will need some time to learn and improve. If you look at my first blog post or my first YouTube video, which has a weird amount of views for the very poor production quality that it has, you'll see that there's a long way to go. But the only way to go over that is to actually start doing the thing. So instead of like agonizing over what's the perfect tool, which platform should I use, uh, and what's the best domain name, right? Just start. And you can always reinvent yourself. You can always burn things down and build them back up. But uh, if you ever want to get somewhere, you really need to start and it's better to start today with like less preparation than tomorrow. Second, and this is also super important, you need to find fun and joy in what you're doing. Because this is a marathon and it's certainly not a get-rich-quick scheme. Well, I said that I earned last month as much as I would have as a lawyer, but 
that took me A, two and a half years to get there, and B, I might not hit the same milestone again this month. Uh, point being, uh, it took two and a half years to get here with a lot of over hours and just a lot, a lot of time put into this. And if it was purely about the money or, you know, getting ahead, then it would have been a lot more efficient ways to do that. I could have just focused on my main career, you know, put all the effort in there and be a lot further ahead than where I am right now. So unless you really enjoy doing this and you yeah, have fun doing it, A, I don't think you will stick to it long enough to uh, see results. And B, it's just probably not worth it because there are a lot, again, a lot easier ways to earn money, a lot easier ways to, to get ahead than this. So if you yeah have a friction and you just do it because everyone else is doing it, I don't think this is the right thing to do. But if you have fun doing it, if you like sharing things with others, if you like doing the actual uh, stuff that you work on, right, then this can be an amazing opportunity. And then last but not least, if you decide to start, then I would recommend that you pick one channel, blog a newsletter, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it is, pick one of them and stick with it. One mistake that I see a lot of people doing is that they try to do everything at once and then they stretch themselves too thin. It's really, really hard to learn uh, the ins and outs of a specific platform, what works, what doesn't work, and it will take you a long time, even if you focus on just one. But if you, you know, stretch yourself too thin and try several ones at once, uh, it will just delay the time until you see results even more. So you're more likely to give up before it amounts to anything. So what I would recommend is pick one of them, pick the one that you're most comfortable with and just start and try to see it through for like six to 12 months uh, to see A, does it get any results and B, do I actually still enjoy doing the things I do here? And after that, you can then add another channel or pivot to a different one. But yeah, rather start with one and focus on that. So there you have it, how Notion completely changed my life and how you maybe can use some of the things that I learned along the way to do the same. If you're interested in something like this, then uh, check out the link in the description. I've curated a list of resources from other creators who are a lot better at what they're doing and have written a lot better resources on this. So uh, check out the blog post and yeah, there you'll find a lot more on this topic. I'm also hosting a live AMA soon on YouTube. So if there's anything you wanted to know either about me or about Notion, then definitely sign up for that link again in the description. Last but not least, the giveaway. To celebrate this yeah, crazy milestone of 10,000 subscribers for my newsletter, I'm giving away all my paid Notion templates plus one hour of one-on-one -on -one Notion consulting. And it's super easy to enter. Simply uh, comment below this video and I'll pick a winner somewhere in the next one week to 10 days and I'll notify you. And yeah, that's it for that. Hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate it if you leave a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.